Hello YouTube, this is Julia Plaus, children's book author and child at heart. Now this is going to be kind of a weird video because while it is going to be about my Hunchback of Notre Dame toys, I'm afraid I don't have that much to show you. Um, first things first, the, uh, the Disney Adventures. This is uh, July 31st, 1996. I was seven when Hunchback came out and, you know, my sister and I, we loved to uh, go to Blockbuster. There was a Blockbuster uh, right across the side street from our house, and we'd always go there to gear up for the next big Disney movie. Like, we'd get the, all the promotional candy, the sweet tarts shaped like characters, the embossed chocolate bars, the y anything that was Disney. We were like, all right, sweet, new Disney movie. So we just assumed we were going to love Hunchback. And, um, like, uh, I mentioned in my Pocahontas video that uh, my dog chewed up my Pocahontas dolls and Jasmine as and Esmeralda. This is the Esmeralda dress from the and her tambourine that we had the dancing Esmeralda doll, but he chewed it up. We had a lot of action figures. Um, none of the characters, well, except for these two gargoyles, uh, Victor and Hugo, these, these have survived. But all the other characters are missing. And uh, I've got a lot of accessories left over. The first action figure set I ever got was... Um, Esmeralda and Phoebus and they came with like a like a table to sit at and these two little benches to sit on and They each came with their little goblet and pitcher of water and and this uh, <laughs> This fire pit thing um, And Esmeralda and Phoebus are missing. I had Frollo and Frollo came with uh, this table with uh, This basket on it and the, he actually came with two of these little books and Frollo is missing and I had a Quasimodo, and he came with, you know, his table that he has in the movie. The table that, um, the feet are, like, pieces of a broken statue, so it looks like the table has human feet. And it came with a little model Notre Dame that he made, and the little itty-bitty, you know, wooden figures. And all I've got left from that is his, uh, wood carving tool. Quasimodo is missing. I had Clopin, who came with a, like, a... Like, the entrance to a tent. It was, like, just just, just the entrance. And uh, I've, got, I've still got his hat. And I don't know if he played a trumpet in the movie, but I got a little trumpet. And his little, uh, you know, who is this creature? Who? What is he? What? How did he come to be there? How? Hush. His little hand puppet. That's adorable. I do not have Clopin anymore. I have these two horses. I have Achilles and, uh, well, Esmeralda never rode a horse in the movie, but... For some reason, they made her a horse. These each came with uh, a Phoebus and an Esmeralda that you could actually spread their legs and make them sit on, on the saddles. So that's... <laughs> when my, my sister got this, um, since this is not a character in the movie, I had to ask my sister, what are you going to name it? And she looked at it and she was just like, Snarf Butt. And then she was like, no, 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 okay, uh, uh, Jezebel. So she named this horse Jezebel. But to this day, we still refer to horses as snarf butts. We, like, if we're driving cross-country and we're looking out at a farm, we're like, snarf butts! <laughs> so, oh, this, the horses, of course, you could hook a horse up to this, uh, whatever it is. Um, I don't know what it's called. Uh, harness. But, uh, this was, like, the traveling, uh, performer. Thing. It came with a ton of accessories some of which I still have, some of which I don't. Here's, here's basically, I don't want to go through every little item, but yeah, this came with a lot of cool accessories, and it came with Esmeralda in her red dress. And I remember that action figure had very articulated cleavage. Like, as a child, I remember looking at it, just kind of like, uh, wow. <laughs> they were, like, really sculpted to, like, rise off the chest, and, and like, yeah, that is part of her character. Like, Esmeralda's yeah, she's hot. That's kind of what drives the story. But the reason I don't have any of those characters anymore is because when uh, we actually went and saw Hunchback in the theater, it scared the living crap out of me. It traumatized me big time. Uh, it w I mean, it's so dark and so frightening. The beginning where, you know, Frollo kills Quasimodo's mother and then almost drowns him, and the way Quasimodo is treated at the festival... And, and Hellfire, that's all incredibly frightening, and I, cu I couldn't deal with it. And I think that I threw those action figures away just because having them around caused me so much anxiety. You know, they were like triggers. And, like, I think it was, like, the first time this basement flooded, and we were thrown away 
stuff that had been water damaged were just like, okay, this has to go. This is all moldy now. Even though those action figures weren't damaged because they're solid plastic, I was probably just like, you know, just as long as we're throwing stuff away, just throw those away too. Just get them out of here because they were scaring the crap out of me. And uh, I regret it. I wish I still had those action figures because now I'm in an age where I want to, you know, look back on this stuff and maybe even put it in a display case and stuff. And I can't do that with no action figures. Uh, I did not see Hunchback again until I was 13. I was starting to ask some questions. I was, I was getting curious and I was, I was asking my sister, like, why did Frollo want to kill Esmeralda again? Like, well, what was the deal with that? And she's like, because he was attracted to her and he was a man of the church and he felt that was a sin. So he was like, you know, if I can't fuck her, I'll just kill her. And I was just like, wait, how is being attracted to the opposite sex a sin? And this is before I even was aware of Catholicism. I was raised half Protestant, half Jewish, and I went to a Lutheran grade school. So I've ne I had never been exposed to Catholicism and I didn't even notice you know, of course there are, there are, there are a lot of Catholic churches in my neighborhood and I see them, but I never really thought about like, what does Catholic mean? So, you know, that kind of opened the door to me exploring like, oh, there are a lot of different branches of Christianity. And then I had to learn that like Catholicism is the one that's been around the longest and they've got all these, you know, bizarre rituals and strict rules that don't make sense. And, and I was like, okay, I got to watch this movie again. Cause there's a lot of stuff I don't understand. So, um, yeah, at age 13, I, uh, watched Hunchback again, and yes, it's still dark and scary, but now I can really appreciate it. Now it's one of my favorites. And I had to go and get myself the, the VHS, and I do have the Blu-ray now. It's not here among all this stuff. I had to go get myself the, uh, soundtrack. You know, these songs are very frightening, very, you know, that, that Latin choir in the background is, is frightening, but I like it. You know, I've done a complete 180. Now I love Hunchback, and I can't get enough of it. But, um, one thing that I noticed when I watched the movie again was in Hellfire when Frollo sings, this burning desire is turning me to sin, and he kneels down and all those druids fly up behind him, and they're singing mea culpa. In my memory, what after seeing the movie once, what I thought I remembered was theater masks. You know, those happy and sad theater masks I imagined were like, on either side of him chanting to him. I could swear that's what happened. And then I watched the movie again and I'm like, huh, that's not it at all. I guess it just screwed with my mind so much that my mind created something that was never there as some kind of coping mechanism. But yeah, that movie really traumatized me, but I'm glad I watched it again because now it's one of my favorites. And I'm afraid, yeah, that's all the Hunchback stuff I got for you. So uh, thanks for watching. Sorry, I don't have much to display. Um, but, uh, check out my other stuff, please, and, uh, like and subscribe, and please check out my children's book on Amazon, The Last of the Pitbulls. Thank you.